How do you watching the Yorkshire Bike Mechanic? My name's Dave Kay and I hope you're all well and I've found my apron. Yes, I've found my apron. I'm not going to tell you where I found it because um, I found it in such a stupid place. It was right under my eyes to begin with. I couldn't even see it. Anyway, I found it, I put it on and I feel all right now. I feel bit, much better. found my apron. And we've got some licorice somewhere. There we are. There's my licorice dash. Uh, just behind there. Right, so we have today, um, I'm going to try and uh, cut this video down in size. On the stand behind me, you will see a Cube Stereo 160. Part carbon, part aluminum or aluminium, whichever you want to call it. Um, it's about a year old and it's coming for a full service. It's done just short of 1200 kilometers. Okay, and it is the second chain that's been on there. So it's done quite well. Um, it won't take a third chain. Uh, we're gonna have to renew some stuff. So what I thought we'd do is, <clears throat> there's a few things that we need to, well, there's quite a lot of things that we need to do on this particular bike. But one of the things that I wanted to video today was uh, the headsets knackered. So we were going to change the bearings in the headset uh, and I want to try and dispel some myths of headset bearings because um, some people said which headset bearings for this and which headset bearings for that. There's that many on the market headset bearings do your head in honestly. So um, what I'm going to do is try and explain a little bit more about headsets particularly on this Cube stereo. Uh, and we'll show you how to get those bearings out and how to put new ones in. It's fairly straightforward. So you don't need a lot of tools for this job. Uh, it's quite simple from a tool point of view. Uh, you need a, probably a 6mm maybe Allen key, a 4mm Allen key and possibly a 5mm Allen key. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take this top cap off. We can put that to one side, which we've done already. We need to loosen these pinch bolts just slightly, one at a time. Okay, not all the way, you'll find it easier to undo if you would do a little bit at a time on the pinch bolts. Uh, we need to take the front wheel out, so we'll just whip that out. Makes it the fork a little bit lighter. Okay, put that to one side. So we'll just put his hand under the fork, okay, and we'll just undo the rest of these pinch bolts. So that leaves the fork loose so we need to be careful to keep hold of it okay now we can turn the bars and hold the fork still so we'll take these bars off and we'll just fold them to one side and then drop the fork through the steerer tube okay keeping keeping uh, being sure not to lose these headset spacers Okay, pull the top cap off and then we can drop these forks all the way through, okay? Okay, just need to hold the bars and drop them out and then use whatever you've got to hold your forks to one side, okay? Just to stop them flopping around on the floor. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just drop the camera in a little bit closer. So now that we've got the forks to one side, okay? Uh, we can go ahead and take these particular bearings out of this headset. In this, on this particular bike, the headset on the bottom is exactly the same as what's on the top. Okay, so we'll look at the top first. Uh, the bottom bearing came out with the fork. It's actually sat there on top of the fork. Don't know whether you can see that. Okay, so it dropped out when we took the fork out and remained on the fork. I'll just get a cloth. Okay, so have, let's have a look at this bearing on the top. Um, first of all we'll just take the top, the top off and we'll just pull that bearing out there. Okay. Now this particular top cup okay, is fairly standard uh, for this particular size. It's 56 millimeters in diameter is the actual shell. Okay so I've got one. Okay. And this is exactly the same shell basically as, as that's in there, okay? And there's a size written on it, on the side. 
56, ZS56, which means that this diameter is 56 millimeter. Okay, you usually find that semi-integrated bearing cups like that are more or less the same size. They're always 50, nearly always 56 millimeter. If, for example, um, the bottom cup is different, okay, which is often, you'll you'll usually find that it's actually like that. Okay, so the so this particular piece actually sits inside, uh, but that's actually left on the outside. That's 56 millimetres, that's 56 millimetres, but the bearings in these two are exactly the same, okay? You've got the same diameter bearing housing in that, that cup as that cup, so it's the same bearing. So let's have a look at the bearing. Okay, so this is the bearing that's come out of the top. Let's measure it. So that measures just about 52 but there'll be a measurement on the side that'll be written on the side, or it should be. If it's not, 51.8. Okay, you can measure it on that, that that particular width as well. Okay, you can measure it there as well as the bearing. Sometimes if it's an old bearing that's come out, usually covered in muck and you can't you seem to find that particular size. Um, so, uh, so that is 51.8, was it? Yep, 51.8, one side, the inside of this particular bearing is 45 degrees, okay? So that particular chamfer, see if I can... So that particular chamfer on the inside is 45 degrees. On the other side, that's 36 degrees, okay? So this is, this bearing is 50, fi, this bearing is 51.8 36 45 okay so we've got 36 degrees on the top and 45 on the other side okay so this fits nicely in this particular cup okay so this is the cup so if we drop this bearing in this cup and look at the bottom we can see how nice and flush it is there's no gap there between the bearing and the actual cup okay which is where it's supposed to be so the inside of the cup that you can see there, that matches, that's 36 degrees as well. So you've got a mat, two matching surfaces there. Um, the inner one uh, here is 45, that sits on your fork, okay, or sits uh, around the expansion uh, collet that, that, we, that you saw earlier on. Um, so it's two sorts of bearings basically. The bearings for this particular headset, like most mountain bike headsets, are very common. Okay, they're fairly generic. Um, usually get two sizes. You usually get 36-45 and 45-45. Okay, so that's the angles obviously on each, on the inner and the outer. So 45-45, 51.8, or 36-45, 51.8. They're the two main bearings for most mountain bike headsets, okay? This is the this is the bottom headset size, by the way. Don't forget on this particular bike that the top headset is exactly the same on the bottom. On a lot of bikes, on the, the top one's slightly different. It's smaller uh, because the, uh, the tube is actually tapered here, okay? But in this particular case, so we've got two. So let's try and put a 45-45 bearing in this cup. Okay, so this is a 45-45, 51.8, and I'll try and put it in this cup, and it'll fit, it'll go in. Okay, it's gone in nice. But if we look, if we look there, if we look there, can you see there's a gap between the bottom of the bearing and the actual cup? Okay, so... What we've done is we've put a 45-45 bearing in a 36-45 cup and it needs to be 36. So that needs that surface needs to be 36 on your bearing. So for this particular top cup, top cup bearing you need 51.8 36-45, okay, which is what's in. So that's the that's the the bottom and the top cup in this particular case. So what we'll do is, 
I know that these particular bearings are all right, so we'll probably pop this back in. Okay, so I'll just unhook it. So just to kind of recap, if you like, you'll find that most bearings for mountain bikes are the same, with the exception of probably Cannondale and maybe Canyon, who like to do, like to do things a little bit different. Um, you'll generally find that most headsets are fairly, fairly uh, generic across mountain bikes. You've got two main sorts for your bottom one, uh, which is obviously the tapered side, which is the bigger one. 51.8, 36.45 or 45.45. And you can soon tell the difference by looking um, at that outer cup, what degree that is uh, compared to 45 degrees. Uh, and it's important that you make sure that you get your right bearing for that particular cup. So say you've got a mountain bike that's got a big bearing at the bottom, which we've covered off. Uh, the top one is slightly smaller. Okay, well, quite a lot smaller than the, than the bottom one. So it's, the chances are, if it's semi-integrated, where you've got a small cup, it's probably going to be one of those. Okay. Now the diameter of one of those is 44 millimetres. Uh, which is fairly generic across the board mountain bikes okay now the inner bearing that sits in there okay is slightly different from the uh, the bottom one in terms of angles okay the angle on this particular side is 45 and the angle on the inside is 45 as well okay the chances are that the, that your top one will be slightly different but you can soon tell by looking at these angles because they'll look different, okay? Um, the size on this particular one, which is nearly always the same, uh, 41 mil, okay? So there's a 41 mil bearing, 45, 45, okay? And that just sits in that cup like that, okay? And that goes in there. Um, and then you've obviously got this particular collar and the top cap. Okay, which sits in there. Again, mountain bikes, these are all fairly generic. Um, I'm hoping that I've tried to kind of make things a little bit simple in terms of bearings because it can be really, really confusing. Um, but just try and think of it. If you've got a mountain bike, then generally you will have a, a quite a common bearing, whether it's FSA or whether it's Cane Creek or anything else, the chances are they'll be these sorts of bearings. And the bottom will be 51.8, 36.45, or 45.45. In the top, it could either be uh, 45.36 or 45.45. But you can soon see, you can soon tell which angle uh, you've got on your existing bearing by looking at it. You can soon measure it as well. Um, so I hope that's helped you. Um, if it has, brilliant. Um, if it hasn't, I'm sorry, uh, but I've done my best. Uh, you can always ask questions, make some comments. Um, if you're unsure about anything, just, just leave a comment and I'll try and uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye.